Hey guys, today we're going to be trying something new. Um, we have never actually tried this, but there's lots of instructions all over the internet for doing electro etching. Um, the reason for us doing this at all is because we've, maybe if you've been following along with our channel, we have been trying to get more into plating. And something we noticed is that plating uses many of the same tools that are used in this process. We're going to be taking this plate and we're going to turn it into um, something for our business, basically with our logo and our, uh, our studio address. We're going to put it on our mailbox or something. But there's countless other things that you can do. If the steel is the right size, then you can do what's called roller printing, where you etch a design into it, run another piece of metal on top, run it through your mill, and it imparts that pattern onto your metal. So you can use this for um, multi stage processes where you just want to build a sheet, cut something out of it, whatever you want. Uh, you could also use it for, for us, for packaging. For If you wanted to do jewelry packaging, you could emboss paper, like a cardstock paper, with your logo, information, whatever you wanted to do. Or if you're doing a lot of work in copper, you could actually electro etch your design straight in and use that as part of your finished piece. Just something to note though, is that this does not work on all types of metals. It works best on mild steel, which is what this is. It works on copper. I believe it works on brass as well, but we'd have to give that a shot. Brass is mostly made of copper with a little bit of zinc. It also works on bronze, I believe as well. So it does not work on silver. It will not work on gold or any of those other things because they're what I believe we call more of a noble metal. They don't like to interact in the same way as these other metals with the, uh, the salt water etch process. So let's transfer our design onto this piece of steel and we'll get started. So obviously cutting your design out of vinyl tape, in this case, it's just electrical tape, um, is maybe not the most elegant or easy way to go about this. The, the best way I could imagine is using a vinyl cutter, like a Roland or, or a Cricut. If you know someone with a Cricut, hit them up, see if they'll help you uh, cut out your design because transferring the design is much cleaner. It's going to give you a nice uh, solid covering and it'll just be one solid piece rather than all this waste. This is something I'm not super happy that we're wasting all this material, but it is what it is. And it's definitely a more DIY solution. So now that we've prepped our piece, now we're ready to assemble everything else that we need. So first of all, we need water and salt. You wanna mix the water with your salt at about a five, no, a one to five ratio. So for us, we have about one and a quarter liters of water. So I put in 50 grams of salt. I'll, I did all the conversion, the math separate, but that's about right. Uh, now, just to note, the amount of salt you use is not actually super important. The more salt you add, the more it's going to etch. So if it's, you know, put in 60 grams, it's not the end of the world. It's not an exact science, but let's work around the one to five ratio as a baseline. And we also have our DC power source. Um, one of the reasons why I'm going to be using this, as I mentioned before in the video, is that this is what we're going to be using for our electro plating setup. There are other methods where you can use uh, much higher end equipment. Um, they make this one's, I think, 30 volts to 10 amps is what it's rated for. Other plating equipment is like 80 amps, and I'm not sure how many volts, honestly, but that's way overkill because in this process, particularly amps is not the important factor. We want higher voltage, lesser amps. This can also be done with something as simple as a nine volt battery. However, I tend to not totally agree with the cheapest possible method. In this, I wanted something a little bit more powerful and the variability. If one doesn't work, I wanna be able to change it. If a nine volt didn't work, there's no way you can possibly change it. So the other things that we have are this Pyrex container. I've got a little anode here and then the necessary cables, obviously. So let's get this 
bath ready to go. So I have boiled this water with the salt. That will help dissolve the salt, the salt in the water. So something we noticed as we were doing our etch, after about 15 or so minutes, the the etch wasn't very deep. And I believe that has to, mostly to do with the size of the piece that we're working with and also the size of our anode. The, the piece of copper we're using is relatively small compared to what we're trying to etch. So in other words, it's just gonna take more time. So we're gonna be running this for, let's say 15 minutes and then we'll check it. Um, a normal amount of time is, I would say between 10 and 45 minutes, depending on how deep you want your etch to go. It is very possible for you to over etch your piece. So definitely set up a timer on your watch or your phone or something. Do not forget about this project because if you come back in two hours, you might come back with um, something that's severely over etched. Over etching is best described as kind of like dovetails. So your, your mask covers your the design to create it. If you over etch, it goes down below the mask and the bath starts eating under it. And it creates these little kind of like angled things under your design, which is, you know, in woodwork, it's called a dovetail. So here is our finished etch, and I can definitely see some room for improvement. This is the first time we've ever done this, so I really didn't have too much in terms of high expectations. I really just wanted to do a proof of concept. Is this going to work? For this etch, we did, I believe, 20 minutes or so at 10 volts, 2 amps. I can definitely tell some areas where I would want to improve and why something like a Cricut or a Roland vinyl sticker would be beneficial to the way we did it. Um, for us, we just put the tape across and I can definitely see little lines where there's little gaps that uh, allowed the etch to get through. On the back, we had a little bit of leakage and you can see very clearly, uh, especially in the area where I had to tape down the copper, that had a little bit of leakage as well, but it is the back, so it's not too big a deal. You can also see, albeit Shannon's work was great, it wasn't flawless, so some of the lines aren't perfectly straight, some of the corners are a little jagged, but that's, that's okay, that, that happens with handmade stuff all the time. In terms of depth, it's really hard for me to gauge exactly how much of an etch we got. Um, we're definitely talking fractions of a millimeter. So really depending on what you're doing, it will depend on how long you want it to etch. If you're doing, for example, as I mentioned before, one of those roller print type of patterns, you're probably gonna wanna let it go a little bit longer. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in seeing about some of the other equipment that we were using, like the power supply and um, other equipment that we're gonna be using for plating, feel free to check out those other videos that are available on our channel. Uh, below in the description, I will be listing uh, the voltage and you know, other little things that I did, like how much salt, uh, all the necessary stuff to, that you can use for your etch. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We will be doing a lot more with this sort of thing. Uh, the next step is going to be plating, which I'm very excited for. So if you want to make sure that you don't uh, miss out on that journey, make sure you like and subscribe so that you don't miss it. I will see you guys in the next video where we'll be reviewing probably another resin. We have at least another one on the way that I believe people have been waiting for. So I'll see you guys in that video.